guys. It's been a really long time since I've been by myself in front of my setup. The other day, uh, Jason Crow and I went down to Kentucky for some official business. I wish it was nefarious, like it sounds, but it's not. If you guys watch any Trouble Bee Theater, you know we have this infinite list of movies that we're going to watch that we mostly don't watch and, well, we don't actually even write down in a list. Beer, tacos, pajamas, and one of several things. And then we got to his house and there was a package in his mailbox. And he's like, oh, you're gonna wanna watch this one, aren't you? Yes, please. This movie, um, as you might guess, um, involves a slumber party. And it involves some slaughter. There's really not a slaughterhouse. Yeah, it's a bunch of hot, naked chicks, pillow fights, drinking, Satan worshiping, um, possession, and demons, and ghosts, and, and uh, yeah, other things you would think of as a slumber party. Right off the bat, I am going to say that anybody who wants to say this is misogynistic, sexist, whatever, last time I checked, I have boobs, I have a vagina, and I laughed my ass off. Dick jokes, fart jokes, shit jokes, puke jokes, um, all the things that I really tend to love in a movie. So the premise of this movie is that a bunch of women, and they are women, they're grown women, get together once a year for a slumber party. And you assume that they were friends in high school, college, something like that and they don't have a ton in common now. And for those of you who are younger out there watching this and saying, yeah, they just made a bunch of caricatures. No, once you get older, your friends are your friends. Doesn't matter. First we have Lennon who is played by Erin Ryan and she is us. She is the meta chick. She is into these movies from an actress named Rocket Von Ribcage, who is played by, and I will get this wrong, Ariel Jardo. And um, it, they basically involve a lot of cartoony CGI. She's completely naked. You know, we've got buff, muff, everything. So she gets like the advanced copies of these movies and everybody pretends like they like the movies because they like, they like linen. Um, I can't tell you how many times during that movie I was like, Lennon, don't back down. No, don't, don't apologize. We have Courtney, who is the drunk, what I like to call the woo girl, uh, who is played by Haley Madison. Fabulously, um, if you know anything about me, again, you know that I love Karis Howell and that Haley Madison's, um, sex scene with Duke the carousel uniform. Um, it's my second favorite inanimate object sex scene ever, only behind Team America World Police. Hey, we also have Kayla Elizabeth, who plays Carol Ann. That does not come into play at all. We have the weird chick, Gretchen. She's played by J. Anna Lupa. I probably am saying that wrong as well. She was so awesome. <laughs> the things that this girl would do with her face. It's like she just had these wide eyes and would not blink. And she smuggles bones in her snatch to the party to do satanic rituals. Melissa Zaz plays Moon, who is the moon child, the flower child, who owns the bookstore. Um, her role is more of trying to channel Gretchen when things kind of go. Ronnie Jonah plays Langley, uh, aptly named because, well, somebody's got to be packing heat, right? You got bad guy, right? She's the cop in training. She also plays a professional wrestler, a former professional wrestler, which she actually was. She is in this movie, a former tag team partner of 
Blanche, played by Regan Wright. And if I remember correctly, and I don't have the DVD with me, but um, their names were The Crimson Bride and Mega Slut, because <laughs> Blanche's character, her quirk is that she's obviously gay, but she's all about the D. Alice Winkler from Many Things, Space Babes in Outer Space. If you have not seen that movie, then you are doing yourself a complete disservice. But she plays somebody named Zoya. She is the Russian. Uh, I kept wanting to call her Zoya because I like to watch Glow. Um, but she plays it, that deadpan Russian thing, the whole way through, perfectly. Perhaps my favorite, her name is Eve Moreau. Dolores is the one who is very shy and reserved, who knows it. She's oftentimes kind of hiding behind corners, um, but she has to get drunk to be able to show her titties. So there are a couple points where she is just dabbing and hilarious. Like she's got one boob hanging out. She's got her solo cup. She's like, I'm drunk, but I'm only one titty drunk. <laughs> When you get that laugh out of me, that's like the genuine laugh. This was directed by Dustin Mills. Um, so there's one penis. Um, Marcus Koch did the special effects and he actually was in the trailer within the movie for um, Rocket Von Ribcage's movie at the beginning um, as a very like pussy kind of guy. Um, Jason Crow was on the set and was the voice of the angry skeleton in the trailer. Um, but those are your three penises. The rest are just boobs and vaginas and bad juvenile humor the whole way through. So you gotta know that I love this. So getting to the movie itself, <laughs> these chicks all get together for slumber party. Gretchen is a person who is like a new one. Um, so there's the point where she's actually like pulling bones out of her snatch. <laughs> so that she can do satanic rituals. And the girls are like, oh, I mean, she's kind of weird, but I mean, she's okay, right? <laughs> hey, put comments down below if you've actually like organically had a naked pillow fight at a slumber party. Overall, I really loved it. I was cracking up the whole damn time. Um, was that some of the characters didn't really get fleshed out. Um, and not that any of them did get fleshed out. Some of them didn't meet their potential. So, for example, Dolores, she had some great one-liners. I mean, she was a very one-dimensional character, but she was hilarious and awesome. And she almost got her vulva puked on, you know lots of stuff but um but then you had other ones who had maybe more screen time who didn't have quite the comedic presence so i think this happens a lot of times when you have a very large cast um and come on you want to have a lot of chicks with boobs hitting each other with pillows so i get it here's the thing that i love about Haley madison and the times that i've seen her is that she is a hot chick I mean, she's hot, she's young. Um, she could very well be the kind of person who would be like, oh, no, I'm not doing that. No, she just is like, fuck it. As she said in a message that she sent to me, she said she turned it up to 10. I said, no, my dear, you turned it to 11. Um, she's hilarious. I, she really kind of stole the show in this one. Gretchen was so awesome. The way that she played everything. Um, she's just deadpan and um, she really didn't have any kind of qualms about doing anything. I felt like those two were like the ones that I felt like just kind of gave it their all. And I'm not saying that the other ones wouldn't have, but those two roles, Gretchen and Courtney, were the ones that really required it and those ladies did a fabulous job. Um, the basic gist of it is that Gretchen has a whole plan that she's just using these, these morons um, so that she can do some sort of satanic ritual where she dies, she dies in the pillow fight, it's in the trailer, not a spoiler, and 
she does the satanic ritual to where she leaves her mortal body and then like comes back and then can like haunt them and whatever. Um, I don't really care because I laughed my ass off. This movie is not available yet. So the only reason that I got to see it was that Jason Crow was a backer and I've been told by my inside sources, which is basically, I had Jason text Dustin Mills and say, hey, when are people gonna be able to watch this? And I can tell you that if you go to patreon.com slash DW Mills, it's just M-I-L-L-S, uh, you can follow the Patreon without actually giving money. I guess you can give money if you want to. Hey, Easter casket, slaughterhouse slumber party. Come on, this guy is about quality. He really is. So yeah, you can give him money, but if you don't want to, you can follow his Patreon and find out when this movie is going to be released. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be making some rounds. I know it was screened a couple weeks ago at one of the film festivals. So if you start making the convention circuit, I'm sure you'll see it here and there. But definitely put this one on your radar if you have the sensibilities that I do. At Triple B Theater, we are going to be doing some more cool stuff. Um, like I said, not Kentucky Meth Lab. No, no like justified action, you know. There might be some like speeding through Kentucky in a Dodge Charger, but it's not going to be as cool as it sounds. And the horn doesn't blow Dixie. And I'm only half of Triple B Theater, so I guess I'm like one and a half B Theater. Although I'm, I have both the boobs. And I've got the booze. So maybe I'm like double B Theater and Jason's just like the single B. I give it our gold seal of approval. This is the kind of movie we are about, kids. So, again, boobs, booze, blood, I would say bad fart jokes are kind of a necessity for me as well, but that doesn't really fit into a triple B. So, yeah, this one definitely has it all. Coco's getting up. He told me he would not get up. You promised me. You better go lay down. I'm just gonna hear click, 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 click. Go lay down, Coco. Coco, go lay down, baby. He can't hear, or he can, and he chooses not to. Hey, Coco. As soon as I start saying something, he's gonna start click, click, clicking.